you have to look at the, uh, the 2011 contract and determine whether Judge Burnett properly decided the issue of unconscionability. And it is our position that under a de novo review, she did not. And there's three reasons why she did not. First, the terms of the 2011 client service agreement doesn't alter any individual's substantive rights. It is a practical, viable means of individualized dispute resolution. This case is far different than the Brewer case that Judge Burnett relied upon. In Brewer, there was not a single consumer that ever went to arbitration. Here, the record re reflects that this is viable and practical, and in fact, since 2008, there have been 100 consumers who have gone to arbitration with H&R Block. There have been 36 consumers that have gone to arbitration with H&R Block under this exact agreement between 2012 and 2013. So the facts of this case are far different than Brewer. The second reason why the Can trial court... Yes. Me, me for no problem. But I guess that's our problem. It's kind of why we're here. Yes. But are you then suggesting that um, although attributes of the arbitration provision as between this clause and Brewer might have been the same, in other words, um, it, it appears to be you know a document that can't be negotiated. It you know has those kinds of adhesive contract principles. That what then becomes dispositive for purposes of determining unconscionability is whether or not consumers then take advantage of the arbitration provisions. That, I, that would be, be significant evidence in weighing against finding what would otherwise be a, a one-sided or a non-negotiable term um, unconscionable or not. Obviously, it is. It is. It is. I believe the most important factor. And uh, Judge Teitelman commented upon that in the Brewer decision and found, uh, I think, the, uh, the utmost significance in the fact that no consumer under the contract in the Brewer case, no consumer had ever been to arbitration. And on that point, I just happen to have another blow up dealing with the facts of Brewer and showing that the facts of Brewer are far different. The factors involved in Brewer are far different than what we have in this case. In Brewer, there was, as I said before, in Brewer, no consumer had ever been to an arbitration. And here, again, we have, the record shows 36 from 2008, oh, I'm sorry, 36 in the one year period of 2012 to 2013, and over 100 since 2008. You can see, and this is contained in our brief, that under each of the different factors that are laid out in the Brewer decision, the agreement in this case is far different. And we believe that not only does this agreement provide a practical, viable means for dispute resolution as reflected by the number of arbitrations done, but it actually makes arbitration easier, faster, and better than filing a case in circuit court. I think everyone agrees as a preliminary matter that it must be a reasonably effective um, mechanism to opt out. And uh, in examining un the unconscionability of that opt out provision, uh, I think it's important to remind uh, ourselves, Brewer and other Missouri Supreme Court cases that talk about the fact that although you're examining sort of the contract formation when you're talking about unconscionability, um, Brewer and post-Brewer, um, that unconscionability can manifest itself um, later. Um, it doesn't necessarily show up the day you sign the contract. The unconscionability may show up later when you go to opt out and H&R Block says they have no record of your opt out. And on that point, um the, the argument that's been made by H&R Block here is that the presence of the opt-out provision, which would at least on its face appear to give a consumer an opportunity not to, to be forced to arbitrate claims, uh, negates, in effect, as a matter of law, any claim of unconscionability of the arbitration provision. Um, and what is your response to that point? There is no Missouri case that says that, of course. And all of the cases cited by H&R Block the agreement was fought, found to be otherwise conscionable. In other words, it was one factor to be considered. And that really is the principle of Brewer, of Robinson, and subsequent arbitration cases. You don't look at a single term. 
You don't look at any specific single term in the agreement. And no single term, if it's there, you check it off and the contract is conscionable. You must look at the agreement as a whole. That's what Brewer says in cases subsequent to Brewer. So even if the opt-out was um, fairly delivered, um, both in terms of substance and execution, um, it would not mean that it wipes away the unconscionability of the rest of the agreement. And there's a couple reasons why that opt-out agreement, both at the time of contracting and, of course, later, is unconscionable. First, we have this readability study, okay? And I, I think, although the court correctly stated there's de novo review as to arbit arbitrability, th there is a question um, that we believe gets deference, and those are the factual findings of the trial court. Those are entitled to deference. Yes, sir. Yeah. Or, as your opposing counsel has argued, should we just be looking at the face of the document? Well, I, I think you, it is a factual issue in the sense that the court in Lopez won, dispatched the trial court to go make factual findings under this agreement, consistent with Brewer, and then it asked the question about the opt-out agreement and mutuality. And then uh, Judge Burnett on remand did exactly that. And um, those findings are entitled to deference. And, and with respect to that opt-out clause, one of the findings that the court made below, which I think is relevant to this opt-out question at the time of contracting, is um, whether it was um, uh, confusing and to the average consumer, which is the test. And what h and Block's own readability study said about that was that most customers do not grasp that they agree not to sue H&R Block through this arbitration provision, and that they have a way to opt out of this if they choose to. The heart of this case, and if you look at Brewer or any of the decisions, is does this agreement provide for a practical, viable means of individualized dispute resolution? And it is undisputed that it does and it has for hundreds of people.